You know how old Ramis once dodged the Vietnam draft by taking literal meth right before his physical? And that Bill Murray once hired a deaf assistant who only spoke sign language during the filming of Groundhog Day to make communication between him and the producers as awkward as possible. And that Dan Aykroyd is a UFO nut job who literally believes in the supernatural and sells skull shaped bottles of vodka that sell for about a thousand pounds a litre. I believe I'll pass. Look, all I'm saying is that these men don't sound like they were ever the easiest to work with, but you put them together, they're the goddamn fucking Ghostbusters. Yeah, Ghostbusters is one of those movies that if you haven't seen, people will look at you weird. This supernatural comedy from 1984 has got to be the most influential movie of that decade. The chemistry between the cast is god tier, the soundtrack is burned in our brains, the set pieces are funny, creative and full of character. It's a certified classic, what can I say that hasn't already been said? But with that status, of course comes imitators. And whilst American copyright laws meant that Ghostbusters knockoffs weren't ever going to grace silver screens stateside, the rest of the world stood proud on their foreign lands and claimed, you have no power here. And then they made their own Ghostbusters movies. With blackjack and hookers. Oh, and me using that Futurama clip there? Not a joke. So let's turn a blind eye on the small matter of blatant copyright infringement and see if any of these films hold any promise. Let's go. Okay, up first, let's take a look at an Indonesian take on Ghostbusters with Ghost Busa, Mystery Desa Penari, or in English, Mystery of the Dancer Village. This one premiered in 2021 on Disney Plus Hotstar, which is Disney Plus but catered for markets in Southeast Asia. Now the film centers around our main character, Sigit, who for some unexplained reason has the ability to see ghosts, aka Haley Joel Osment Syndrome. I see and one day he witnesses a woman named Ningsi killed in a hit and run incident. And due to Sigurd's ability to communicate with her and Ningsi's ability to communicate with other ghosts, the two make a pact. If Ningsi helps Sigurd with his new ghost busting business, Sigurd will help track down the person who killed her. Interesting premise. Though you'll quickly notice that despite the inclusion of the suit, the name tags, and the car, the movie is less Ghost Busters, more Ghost Whisperer, as it's less about catching ghosts, more about communicating and reasoning with them. But no worries, not a problem if the movie is good. Oh wait, yeah, then there is a problem. The movie is, um, not good. It stinks. I mean, it's pretty simple. The main issue with the film is that it's a comedy, and it's just not funny. The script really is dire in this. Like, one thing they do a lot is having a translation chain. So the ghost can only communicate with Ningsi, Ningsi can only communicate with Sigit, and then Sigit needs to translate for his fellow Ghostbusters. And if that sounded long and boring to you, it's cause it is. And yet they keep showing them doing this. Again. Yeah, juga sih, Mbak. Yeah, yeah juga sih, Mas. Yeah juga sih, Mas. And again. Mati bunuh diri. Diputusin pacar. Aduh, wow, katanya okay. bunuh diri, diputusin pacar. Diputusin pacarnya, bunuh diri dia. And again. Keluarga Artanto mengucapin terima kasih. Terus sekarang mereka mau pamit pergi. Keluarga Artanto. And every Indonesian simultaneously cancels their Disney Plus subscription. Goodbye. And the other jokes don't fare well either. There's a bizarre fat shaming bit thrown in here. Many scenes have zero punchlines and come across more as poor ad libbing. And what few jokes that do work are ruined by how they go about delivering them. Ah. Yeah, like on paper, that's actually a funny joke. But the need to translate again there completely ruined the timing. Like, here's how a scene like this should be done. Okay, open the door. Wait, I can't open the door. Why? It's locked. Oh, it's okay though. I have a key. Oh, great. No problem then. Yeah. Shame this case for another door. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> so yeah, the comedy is bad, which is made worse as there's more product placement in this movie than there are good jokes. 
Oh, what products you may ask? Kita lagi ini bang, persiapan buat lomba PUBG nasional. PUBG. PUBG? Masuk juara PUBG? Oh, awesome. Can't wait to play a third-person shooter with a flat touchscreen. I didn't like my hand ligaments anyway. Okay, so the bad jokes aside, I have to say, some parts of the film do verge on being effective. Like this scene where Ningxi sits down and contemplates her purpose in life. Or death, should I say. Oh, and kind of an interesting choice here, as Ningxi can change her appearance to be either her younger self or how she looked when she died. So when she's older, it's a nice visual cue she's feeling down. It's an interesting idea that I don't think I've ever seen before. And this scene, believe it or not, I found it to be quite touching. All the characters come together and console her. And this is actually quite a moving moment. It's just a shame that they choose to end the scene like this. Yeah, the one moment in the film that actually worked and they ruined it with a goddamn fourth wall break. You f it up! You f it up! So you might be wondering, well, what about the ghost busting stuff? Where's the PKE meters and the ghost traps and the proton packs? Well, they are straight up non-existent, mate. Yeah, despite the name of the bloody movie, they don't do any ghost busting at all. Hell, they even refer to themselves as, get this, the non-violent ghost busters. Hello, fungsi kesehatan, apa kekerasan, ada yang bisa bantu? Yeah, so this is stupid. And also, kind of hypocritical in a movie like this. As Ghost Booster is actually very violent. Yeah, I mean, the literal opening shots of this movie are of a mother and daughter getting violently stabbed to death. I mean, I can't even show you how bloody this is. Unless you support me on Patreon, then I don't need to worry about that. Thank you, guys. And then there's a scene where these two comic relief ghost characters reveal how they died. Like, okay, maybe they did something stupid like lighting their cigarette in a petrol station, or maybe they got flattened by a steamroller or something. <laughs> yeah, for most of you guys, I had to censor that. They both slit their own wrists, and it's a full-on close-up with blood and everything. And look, this is supposed to be a comedic scene as well. Just look how Ningxi reacts when she finds out how they died. <laughs> What's funny about that? That's freaking horrible! What is wrong with you?! It's so bizarre. The tone is all over the place. Scenes which should be serious are funny, and scenes which should be funny are serious. Case in point, this scene. Yeah, they're referencing the Tom Riddle diary in Chamber of Secrets. Now, as soon as I saw this, I actually got excited. So much potential for comedy gold here. Like maybe the ghost begins screwing with him and they get into a petty argument on the pages or something. And it initially looks like this is what they were going for. But then, what did they actually do? Yeah, they play it stone cold serious. He heads back in time and finds out how the ghosts that are haunting the house died. You're parodying a scene and you forgot to, you know, parody it. So it ends up not being a parody. It's just a rip off. I need to remind you that you're already ripping off another movie as it is. I mean, okay, let's talk some positives. The cast are decent. I actually think they work quite well together. Even if one of the characters is, uh, <laughs> well, I wouldn't call his portrayal of a gay man subtle in any way. <laughs> he kind of looks like Keegan-Michael Key's gay Indonesian cousin. That's a sentence that's never been uttered in the history of humanity. But honestly, he's not that bad. And whilst 90% of the jokes miss, some jokes verge on being funny. Kopi. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the kid has better comedic timing than the adults do. 
and the makeup team deserves praise. I mean, some of the ghost effects here are evil dead level good, but it all culminates in a turd of a climax, where they go to a job where it turns out a family was killed by a property landlord after they wouldn't sell them their house. And remember how Sigurd promised to find Ningsi's killer earlier? Well, that plotline gets abandoned very quickly. However, Kamu yang nabrak ibu -ibu malam -malam itu kan? Saya ingat mobilnya. Yeah, turns out her killer just so happened to be the same guy who killed this family. Ooh, how convenient! Look, I realize this probably had next to no budget. I mean, you can tell that by its average cinematography and its over-reliance on stock music. Audio Jungle Audio Jungle So it gets a pass for that, but still, it's a comedy that's just not funny. For that very simple reason, don't watch this. And whatever you do, heed that same advice for the Japanese Ghostbusters, cause their take on it is a great big steaming pile of <laughs> I mean seriously, ask yourselves right now what age and gender you think the Japanese Ghostbusters are, and what setting you suspect they're in. And are you correct? Yes, of course you are! Surprise, surprise! Yep, in 1995, Japan, of course, got high school Ghostbusters. And I know what you're thinking. Isn't this just a JAV? Well, yes. But actually, no. That would imply they have sex in this. But it's all faked sex, like an actual movie. So this is a movie. That being said, the ghosts in this are just straight up dick monsters. <laughs> That's a challenging wank. <coughs> So yeah, this is a trashy Japanese adult video with no sex. Who the flying f is this movie for? Alright, well, let's take a look at the plot at least. Our Ghostbusters this time are Kyoko, Mayu, and Emi, who have themselves a little paranormal club at their school, as they're tasked by their teacher to investigate a strange phenomenon, where all the female students suddenly become sex mad. Alright! Turns out they're all being possessed by deceased perverts. No, no, not alright! <laughs> Well, you learn something every day. I just hope for the sake of humanity that's not why the ghosts exist in the original film. He slimed me. Oh! <laughs> you know, come to think of it, the ghosts all being blue balled actually explains a surprising amount. Bustin makes me feel good. Oh, and if you're wondering why these perverts decide to possess girls' bodies to only then proceed to have sex with male students. Good question. I guess they were all gay perverts. I mean, this is unmistakably a Ghostbusters ripoff, with the PKE meter, which looks more like an oversized lightsaber, to the proton pack equivalents, which are actually vacuum cleaners in this. <laughs> Yeah, using vacuum cleaners as ghost catching devices, I know what a lot of you are thinking right now. You know, interestingly, this movie actually predates Luigi's Mansion. Lord, I pray this filth wasn't the inspiration for a Nintendo classic. I really can't think of anything positive to say about this movie. The VFX is terrible. It's not funny or interesting. There's a weird angle they try to pull with one of the Ghostbusters trying to contact a dead grandmother, which feels really tacked on. I mean, you'd be insane to watch past the first scene in this movie. I mean, seriously, I've never been so confused by a film so quickly. Just watch. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. First off, this is the happiest anyone's ever looked when topping themselves. I wanna die! Secondly, jumping off a three-story building should take like a second to reach the bottom. It took her six. Thirdly, what kind of soundtrack is this? A scene like this should be silent or have very somber music playing. A happy little diddle on the piano doesn't tend to go well with suicide. This feels wrong. Fourthly, 
Could you really not get the actress to like fall onto the ground like a little bit? If you can't film her landing, just cut to black or have her jump off camera. And lastly, you completely screwed up that cut at the end. <laughs> Yeah, so that seems to be a poor attempt at a match cut. It's when you cut between two different scenes where there's some sort of similar action that bridges the transition. So to see an attempt at a match cut in a film like this is quite surprising. But guys, you know you're supposed to cut on the action, right? It should be cut mid-jump, that way the action has some sort of continuation between the shots. But it doesn't do this, it cuts after she's hit the ground, so the edit is really jarring. Jesus, you could create an hour-long video essay dissecting how weird this one scene is. Which is really saying something, considering the kind of messed up shit this movie goes on to show us. Yeah, I haven't even talked about the dick monsters in this. And the reason for that is... well... I can't. But long story short, they're weird. Understatement of the century, I know. But really, this is one of the most baffling projects I've ever seen. It's too weird to appeal to people with normal taste, and too tame to appeal to people with fucked up taste. If you want to see Japanese Ghostbusters, either watch the 84 film with Japanese dubbing, or maybe check out this J-pop cover they did when the 2016 film came out. <laughs> This is a million times better. But at least put it this way, the 2016 Ghostbusters is now no longer the worst one. That's saying something. Okay, well the Japanese knockoff wasn't any good. What about a Hong Kong one? Because I went onto the internet and I found this. A 1994 Hong Kong production called The Chinese Ghostbuster. Okay, what's this movie about? Well, it's about two ghosts from the underworld, John Kuei and his sister, Ame. And Ame has her sights set on a human from the real world, who she wishes to marry, but also whose life is in danger. So, the two head to the surface to track him down, but as it turns out, the man in question, named Simon, is a cash-strapped male gigolo, who loses often at blackjack. Blackjack! And who- Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not exactly an upstanding citizen, and he has zero feelings for Ame to boot. But she takes the I can fix him approach as the film becomes a desperate race to convince him to marry her, all while facing off against a fellow villain from the underworld who wishes to see Simon dead. Okay. But what's this gonna do with Ghostbusters? Absolutely nothing! Ah. Yes, yeah, so I got swindled. Indeed, this movie is called The Chinese Ghostbuster, but the only actual self-proclaimed Ghostbuster in this is Lam Ching Ying over here. What? Solon! And he's not exactly a main character in this. I think what happened here is that John Kuei, this character, is based on a Chinese mythological figure by the same name, who is best known as a vanquisher of ghosts. This guy is like the OG Ghostbuster. So when it came to translating the film for English audiences, whoever was in charge must have been like, aha, we can rope people into watching this by calling it Ghostbusters. They took the liberty of bullshitting us. You lied to me. It wasn't lies, it was just bullshit. So yeah, it's pretty dated, it has nothing to do with Ghostbusters, nobody on the planet is talking about this movie, it's no doubt a pile of shit, right? Well, no. Yeah, I mean, not to get your hopes up or anything. It is choppy, even sometimes confusing. But there is some stuff in here that I actually really liked and was quite pleasantly surprised by. First off, I like the premise. The idea of a ghost wanting to marry someone and for that someone to be scared shitless when he finds out she's dead, that's a great idea for a supernatural comedy. Has that been done? I, I might be forgetting something, let me know in the comments if I'm being stupid. And whilst they sadly don't quite take full advantage of this premise, there are some pretty funny moments. Like this line has aged wonderfully. <laughs> you know, given Hong Kong's and China's relationship today, that's actually pretty funny. Yeah, when this movie goes for your funny bone, it can really hit. Like, check this scene out where Quay finds out Simon is a gigolo and he's arguing with his sister about it. And keep watching, because it leads to a pretty funny payoff.
，我也决定了，我不回去，你自己回去。你一定要下去。That's good. That's great physical comedy. And keep watching. 哎呦，哥，这次再嫁不出去，我一世都不嫁了。啊，哎，阿妹啊，我这么做也是为了你好啊。那，那你决定要怎么做呢 ？That is brilliant. That that brief moment when you're like, wait, why didn't he fall this time? And then it cuts to his forward-thinking assistant. Mwah, chef's kiss. Brilliant. It is unfortunate though, as this level of comedy doesn't last. The movie, which is a shame, because this is easily the film at its best. But the action scenes are also well done. I mean, we have some Hong Kong veterans here, like Wu Ma and Lam Ching Ying, and they let their creative muscles fly here. <laughs> That is so stupid. I love it. I mean, it is wonderfully over the top, albeit let down by the rough picture quality. Yeah, it's a very obscure movie that's never been given the remaster treatment, which it sorely needs. Add into the equation the shoddy translation, which more often than not has spelling and grammatical errors. Yeah, it's probably not worth watching this until it gets properly remastered. Some of the subtitles I couldn't even read when the picture is too white. Drop shadows are your friend. And the film has other issues, like some confusing editing and directing choices. And then there's the lacking soundtrack, which honestly sometimes sounds more like a video game one than it does a movie. <laughs> And the ending, which honestly isn't an ending. They defeat the villain. They get married in a ceremony the priest from Spaceballs would find too fast, and that's it. Priest for him. Play the credits. Thanks for giving us your money, Hong Kong. Now piss off home. We are so glad you came. Bye bye. bye. God, can you imagine if the original Ghostbusters ended this abruptly? I order you to cease any and all supernatural activity and return forthwith to your place of origin or to the nearest convenient parallel dimension. That ought to do it. Thanks very much, Ray. What? Goes and listen. It went back home. Movie's over. What more do you want? Yeah, it's really bad, and it's such a shame because there's glimpses of greatness here. And it made me think that with all the American remakes out there, this movie is prime real estate for a Hollywood version. I love the concept here. Please, someone out there, give this premise the attention it deserves, because the good stuff here is really good. All right, but what about Bollywood? Have they ever done a Ghostbusters-esque movie? Well, yeah, quite recently actually, because in 2022, Indian cinemas were graced with phone boots. Phone boots. Okay, it sounds weird in English. A、uh, boot is Hindi for ghost. Okay, so only two Ghostbusters this time. This is Major, and this is Gulu. And after an electrocution, gives them the ability to see ghosts. Just go with it. They quickly meet one called Ragini, who they make a pact with. Ragini will help them make money as Ghostbusters if they help her take down the one that caused her death. So yeah, if that sounds familiar, it's 'cause it is. It hits pretty much all the same beats as the Indonesian Ghostbusters, which actually came out a year before this one. Our protagonists are able to see the dead. The female lead is a ghost that died in a hit-and-run car accident. She seeks revenge on those that killed her, and in return, she'll help our leads with their ghost-busting business. Good lord, it's a rip-off of a rip-off. Well, there's something you don't see every day. It's even similar in their tones, as both are comedies and both are more about ghost salvation than they are ghost busting. Despite them literally calling themselves ghost busters. Hood busters. Hey. You need a PKE meter, a ghost trap, and a proton pack if you want to be called that, and you two have none of those. Okay, but let's distance ourselves from that. Is the movie any good? Well, believe it or not, I actually think this movie is pretty damn bad. Actually, yeah, it's um, it's it, it's not it's not good. Yeah, I really wanted to like this one. I mean, the production of this is light years ahead of the other movies I've talked about, but it weirdly has the same issue as the Indonesian one as well. Sorry to sound like a broke record, but it's a comedy and it's just not funny, mostly.
Yeah, I give the edge to Form Boots over Ghost Booster, as this one actually did make me laugh on rare occasions. <laughs> That's good. The, the timing there was perfect. I noticed a little joke thrown in there where he zips up his suit, only to zip it down again so he has a little bit more chest on show. Kudos, that's funny. And I give mad props to actually making a fun joke during the intermission of all moments. Milt the head, break a bath. <laughs> Evil laughter. Uh, so, sorry. But don't let this fool you. The vast majority of the comedy in this is just weird. Like, check this scene out. The two are driving down a road and they hit a ghost, believing her to be an alive woman. They notice her legs are back to front, so they try to rotate them back into place. And yeah, them doing this isn't the weird part. It's this bizarre joke. <laughs> We just heard a woman scream. Is everything all right? Yeah, they get really desperate for a laugh in this. If that was so loud, the International Space Station could hear it. I think the entire surrounding city would have exploded. Though I think the reason a lot of the jokes don't work for me is because I'm not Indian. Yeah, there's a lot of references they make in this that I just didn't get. Like, check this scene out where Ragini tries to convince the guys to help her. <laughs> Yeah, so unless you watch a lot of Indian television, you're probably a little confused right now. As this is a reference to a series of commercials this very actress Katrina Kaif does, where she basically pretends these bottles of mango juice are a penis. I mean, there's no getting around this subtext. There's one which starts with the bottle literally between a man's legs. <laughs> Look, I realize sex sells, but man, that would not be allowed on British television. Okay, but they also do another act to reference later on in the movie. Major and Gulu have just stolen the villain's staff, and they can't get it working. And that's when the villain randomly decides to do this. Okay, so this is an Indian reference to something, so allow me to make a British reference to counteract. Can someone call Craig David? Because I need someone to fill me in. Okay, so apparently this is a reference to a 1983 film called Hero, where this same actor, Jackie Shroff, performed this same flute melody. <laughs> Okay, so we're done now with references only Indians will understand, right? I have no idea who this is. <gasps> Okay, so I found out that this guy is actor Regina Kampf. And from what I understand, he is a bit of a legend in Tamil cinema. He has a major cult following. And many of you might recognize him as Entheran. Yeah, those crazy scenes that surface on the internet where this robot dude transforms into many shapes and sizes. Same guy. Forgot to mention actually that he cameoed in Ra 1 as well. So yeah, the film is chock a block full of references like this. So if you're not overly familiar with Indian cinema, you might end up sat there like, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. But still, the comedy is bad. But it's difficult to chastise the bad jerks, because they might very well be referencing something I don't know. Like this bit comes out of left field. <laughs> Is that a reference, or did the editor just have a seizure? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so the jokes aside, we gotta talk about the song and dance numbers. It is Bollywood after all. And... they're okay. 
The dancing is fun, the beats are head bopping, but I honestly can't remember any tune in particular. But I do have to give praise to the visuals on show. The whole film is vibrant and colourful, cool sets, great costumes, the production is fab. And it also adheres well to the show don't tell rule. When Ragini talks about her past for instance, it actually shows it, instead of her just telling us. So there's a clear attempt to make the film visually interesting. Also, I like the cast. They work very well together. Sidan Chaturvedi and Ishan Kato work well together. And Katrina Kaif plays a confident, no-nonsense ghost that keeps these two bozos in check. It's a dynamic that works, and the actors are giving it their all. It's just a shame that they're let down by the script they're given. And then there's that bloated runtime. Which, I know, it's Indian cinema, longer runtimes are more of a thing there, but come on, a comedy movie should be like an hour and a half, not over two. Especially in one that's just not that funny, and honestly can get kinda cringe at times. <laughs> You know what? I've changed my mind. I think I prefer not getting the references. If you're a huge Bollywood fan and are able to pick up on all the references, you might enjoy this more than I did. But even then, know that the critical response to this was pretty lackluster. And then there's how they end the film. Yeah, they sequel bait. In a film that ended up bombing hard at the box office. Now that is irony. Ugh. I mean, I know this video is about Ghostbusters knockoffs, but I was hoping for something a bit better by now. Tell you what, let's sidestep a bit for our final movie. Instead of talking about a knockoff, what about... A fan film. Yeah, we're heading to Italy with this one, with Real, a Ghostbusters tale, and it tells the story of these guys, Davide, Ludovico, and Simone. They're three science majors who decide to bond together to get themselves an unexpectedly affordable apartment. And why was it so cheap? <laughs> That would explain it. But no worries, they happen to be in touch with Egon. Yeah, Spengler himself, who now apparently works at CERN and speaks Italian. Anni fa sviluppai con alcuni amici una tecnologia molto avanzata per contenere fenomeni spiritici. Okay, I'll roll with it. So yeah, he decides to send these guys the equipment they used in their ghostly encounters to help this Italian trio exercise the demons. And as they do, they discover the spirits of an evil alchemist who wishes to break free of his prison and leave Rome cowering in fear. So, knockoffs weren't the way to go, but this is a full-on fan film. This is a clear labour of love by Ghostbusters fans. And if you're wondering, why did I single out this particular fan film? Because there's loads of Ghostbusters fan projects out there. Hell, there's even another Italian one. Well, this one I'd say is teetering on the edge of being more of an independent production. The IMDb page for this says it had a budget of 75,000 euros, which is pretty cheap for a feature length movie. But for a free to watch fan film that was never going to make a penny of its money back, that's actually pretty sizable. So I decided to check it out. And you'll be pleased to know this is the best movie I'm talking about today. It's not perfect, but for a film with a budget nowhere close to say what Phone Boot had, it's not bad at all. What I initially noticed when watching this was how impressive the VFX is. It's clear where most of the budget went, and it went to good use. The ghosts look fantastic. I mean, at times, the film is indistinguishable from a Hollywood production. Though it is unfortunate that these effects came at the expense of the Ecto-1. Yeah, there's no Ghostbusters car in this. And if you're wondering, well, how do they get around then? Well, that's depressing. At least they're eco-friendly Ghostbusters. The Not Just Bikes guy would love these three. But how are the Ghostbusters themselves? Well, they work pretty well together, I think. I mean, they don't quite have the top tier chemistry of Murray, Aykroyd and Ramis, but they do go for a similar sort of dynamic between them. And whilst it doesn't always work, there's moments of brilliance here. <laughs> I mean that. That right there is the Ghostbusters vibe. Good stuff. And there's a line in the climax regarding a broken tablet that actually made me laugh out loud. Full on credit for that. 
Now, there are problems. Don't want to be too harsh here. It is a non-profit labor of love, but still, the film could have really benefited from a little more show and less tell. There's a lot of talking and a lot of explanation of the film's plot, and it does drag the film down. I mean, you could only be so interested in the villain's backstory when it's delivered to you by a guy reading it from a web page on his laptop. Oh, and get used to seeing this room, by the way. They spend a lot of time in it. You know, I was hoping when I watched Italy's version of Ghostbusters, I could get to see, you know, Italy. But still, the film redeems itself with the climax, as they face off against the villainous alchemist in a final showdown. They're outmatched, and things are looking grim. That's until we get this. No, siamo marines. No! Siamo acchiappa fantasmi. Oh, that is a dope line. Hey, if they rush into battle right now to the Ghostbusters theme, this would be the icing on the cake. Sotto! Yeah! So yeah, the film ends on a high, which is so important to me. A good ending can save a movie. Now, if you do decide to watch this, do tape your expectations. It is a fan film. It's not the most polished in terms of plot or production. A lot of jokes don't work and it does drag in places, but it's a fun passion project that clearly a lot of love went into. And as of now, it's only got about 50,000 views on YouTube, where other lower budget fan films have millions. Yeah, it's weird that the Ghostbusters fan film with clearly the most effort put into it is one barely anyone knows about. So, if you love Ghostbusters and want to check out a good fan project, this is definitely your go-to. I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, that's it for today. Much love to my patrons. If you want to get in on various perks I offer, like ad-free uploads, your name in the credits, and gag reels, Links in the description. Also be sure to check out my other retrospectives like this one where I took a look at foreign language superhero movies. Give it a click if you're interested. Thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.